Okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, this is Jasper Lawler speaking. Um hope nobody's missing that uh, that hour that um we lost out on. We're now in, in the summertime. So we just got the um the risk warning risk warning screen in front of us. We're gonna zoom through that and then get started with the webinar. Any questions at any time, certainly feel free to put a quick message through the, the chat or Q and A box and um, I'm happy to to go into that in more detail, probably towards the end of the webinar, which is expected to be about half an hour long, so finishing about 12.45 BST. Markets all look pretty strong this morning. Um, if we can look in the, the rear view mirror a bit before we get into things, just looking back to, to last week, very much dominated by the the outlook for interest rates from the, from the Federal Reserve, and we had a couple of key data points, namely the the, the GDP, especially on, on Friday, and then the durable goods. Uh, well, in the last couple of weeks, we've had some important data from the U.S. And the point here being that um, the the data on the whole has not been quite as impressive as, as some had hoped from the U.S. Still. Um, seemingly uh, on the up and definitely uh, diverging from the rest of the world, which is um, slowing down. But nevertheless, putting in some question marks over whether the, the Fed is likely to actually hike rates um, in, uh, in June this year. Um, a big one was on Friday, right at the end of the, the U.S. trading. Um, I'm hoping by the time all of us were well past our week's finished with our week's trading, um, you know, it's about 9pm-ish GMT. Um, she uh, made a couple of interesting statements, I think probably the most important of which, and you know, part of why we're seeing a good rally on the open here in um, in Europe, part of the explanation for the rally in, in Asia, and why the US markets finished a bit more positively on, uh, on Friday. It's just because um, what she sort of said was that um, even though the expected direction of, of rate hikes is um, is higher, it could in fact um, slow down uh, in terms of um, how quickly they hike rates thereafter, and it could even uh, could even pause and it could even reverse course. So in a way, tacitly just opening the door should should the U.S. economy substantially slow down, tacitly opening the door for even even QE back on the table. Um, so that's you know that's a real bonus for markets because it's just a, a win-win scenario. Either the economy expands or the Fed's got the back by reversing course on their current drive to tighten monetary policy and just loosening it again. Um, so the, the Fed's got got the markets back is the, is the message that's being received at the moment, and uh, you know that's part of why we're seeing close to uh, 100 points to be gained on the um, on the on the open for. Uh, the U.S. 30. We have a quick look at that chart while we are discussing the U.S. Um, here is the situation. That's the daily chance. Quickly look at the weekly. So, again, just looking back to where was our last kind of key breakout high and why, where might support be found. As you can see, this breakout beyond this, the there was the correction. Here was the prominent breakout from it, and we've been holding above this the, the top of this area for a while. This was a, was a rather ominous week um, last week, but um, we're, we're pulling back again off that area. So this is just about a, a bearish engulfing candlestick, which is um, generally pretty negative for the market, and it is coming right off the uh, the all-time highs. So that weekly chart might lend you to believe that there's going to be a bit of a steeper correction to come. But the picture is not so clear when you drop down to the um, well. It's clear, but um, in, the, in the opposite direction when you get to the uh, the daily chart, whereby we've got this rising trend line. It's only got a couple of key points before meeting our current area, so not the strongest. Nonetheless, um, in combination with this previous low, we've got to see that spike below before, and then we've broken above the highs of these two candlesticks here. Zoom in a bit um, as of today. So we're basically, you know, we've got a false break lower, you know, ran a bunch of uh, stops beneath the market here, and then pushed the market right back up again. And uh, now we're moving up 
into the territory of that, that steep loss that we saw last Wednesday. Now, this is one of those times when I think this is a nice little setup here where we've got this hammer pattern and we've had the break above the, the, the peak of that hammer and we're holding this trend line and we've got that false breakout which is where the hammer took place. And we've got some support on the RSI here. You can see this, um, this 40 level has been absolutely key, or just, just a bit under, maybe 38-ish. Um, and we're pulling off away from there. But, um, but I am slightly worried by the fact that we've made a, a lower high here, not been able to push through to new highs. I mean, that can happen if you're doing a sort of ABC correction and off to new highs. That certainly can happen. You know, that's the sort of thing that happened here. Got to move down a lower high. Could have been very worrying, did drop below, but found support eventually and then pushed higher. So probably you could, you, you could almost assume that is probably what can somehow work out. Maybe not this, with this being the final low, but eventually you would think maybe within this demand area from the, from the weekly chart, we are going to eventually push up to new highs. That would be the default assumption when you're in an uptrend. Um, you know, don't assume the trend's going to reverse because they, they tend to last longer than you could ever imagine. This, this major bull market that we're in being the prime example. Um, but all that being said, I'm a bit worried about this lower high and, and that, um, that bearish engulfing on a weekly candlestick. So I'm, I think there could be some renewed selling interest if we're able to push back up to, uh, to 18,000 again. I think there might be a few people tempted to sell in around there, which is kind of where we broke through on that, that large candlestick there. Um, so we're at 17,900 to get through first, but if you are tempted to to sell the market, I think we're looking at how the market re is, you know, we've got the highs will go all the way up to 18,200. You're risking 200 points if you put an order right in 18,000, um, but maybe seeing how the market reacts in that vicinity, um, you know, could could lead to some sort of setups and perhaps a break of this this rising trend line deeper into this this demand area. <coughs> Now, in terms of data that might trigger that this week, if we are looking, being a bit US focused at the moment, we do have consumer confidence released on Tuesday. Um, consumer confidence has been one of the, the strongest aspects of um, the, the US economy, and even as we've seen retail sales fall down, consumers have still been confident, and that's important for a consumption-based economy. But it's actually been pulling off a little bit. In the last two months, I think it's missed expectations. Um, and so if that's on the cards again today, that's, that's probably not a good thing for, um, I, I would imagine that would be a bad data as bad for markets kind of situation. Followed by that, we've got Wednesday, we've got the ISM manufacturing report. And then importantly on Friday, we've got the NFP report. Now we won't be doing our weekly webinar this time because it's Good Friday, and I'm hoping that you're not going to, to want to watch it then um, on a Good Friday. And um, so there probably won't be much time, even if we were to do a webinar on Monday, which is obviously also a holiday. You know, markets, U.S. markets would also would already have digested it on the Monday by the time we had any chance to do it on the on the Tuesday, which is the next working day, uh, and next open day for European markets. So we're probably going to arrive back at the charts on Tuesday, uh, you know, Monday for those trading FX, um, to already sin a large part of this, um, this non-farm payroll is being digested by markets. And then it will just be the remnants of which will be digested by European markets when they open on, on Tuesday. Um, it, we got to 295 jobs created in, um, in uh, last month's report, so pushing into that 300k mark for a number of jobs created in the U.S. So kind of a bit of a re-strengthening again. I think that will lift expectations a bit, even though the official guesstimate for this NFP is around 250. I think there's going to be a lot of people expecting it to be close up to that 300 again. And if we and if we do end up pushing, you know, ending up in around 250, I think that might be viewed as a as a bit of a disappointment. But it will still be in the region of like uh, enough for the Fed to kind of maintain their hawk, uh, you know, hawkish bias towards a rate hike. I think so. That would probably be seen as uh, as bad for the market. I would I would have thought. Now while we're at it, let's quick have a look at the. Um, this is a similar picture 
in the USSDX, we've got this rising trend line here. So similar situation, if we do run into the sort of, um, you know, we, we're above 2,000, but I think sort of this 2,100, and I've got this, you know, this swing here as a potential area of supply going all the way up into 2,100 up here. Could be a place where we sell off down towards the rising trend line again. I think that's a, that's a risk. And a few, a few people are sort of thinking that um, the, the, the S&P needs to move back down to 2,000 again to, to collect some more buyers. And you can see that this uh, broken trend line is, um, is, is kind of working at the moment. We've dipped below 50, so what we could be looking at is a retest of the 50 RSI, perhaps corresponding with this price level to roll over again down to here. Now, this, in principle, again, is a good pattern. Not a false break, um, but a push off the uh, before we even got to the lows. Um, and, a bit, and again, a sort of break higher before markets open today. Uh, similar thing, close to a sort of double top pack type pattern. So if we do get a close below here, keep in mind we've got this rising trend line, but we could drop even further. We could drop the height of this pattern to the downside, which I think would be closer to this uh, 1970 type support. An interesting, an interesting one is the, uh, the NASDAQ, because the, the composite is, has been very close to its, uh, its all-time high. And again, you can recognize the sort of similar features of the false break lower. We've had a literal, not a literal, but pretty close to a, a double top here. Uh, but a false break of that pattern. So a false break of a sort of prominent pattern can often be a good sign. We just need to break through this this kind of resistance area first to to assume that this is just a consolidation and we're off to new highs. Now, if we flip back to uh, UK markets, uh, we were looking a lot stronger earlier in the session, definitely fallen off a bit. I think part of the reason for the strength today is obviously those, uh, those comments from Yellen last week, uh, but also there's been a lot of speculation in, in Asia that China is about to ease monetary policy a bit further and maybe even engage in some, some fiscal type infrastructure type projects. And that would be good for some of the, uh, the sort of China focused mining and resource companies that are in the, the the UK 100, um, but you know, definitely falling falling from grace a little bit uh, in the UK 100, and um, so I've had this this rising trend line in place for a while. Uh, well, really, just since this peak here, um, just and notice that we're grinding up against it. It's worked once, it's worked twice. So. Um, this this may be the end of it, you know, just finding support within our kind of you know potential area of demand between these two rising moving averages. But obviously the risk is that we slip to the kind of the bottom of what this what could be a kind of rising wedge type pattern. And it was kind of interesting that um, we we went from, you know, you can see the, these patterns do do play out because this is a trend line I had it before. So that was um, a little wedge that kind of dropped down. And then this is then a kind of bigger wedge, which if this were to drop, then we could be looking back down to 6300 again. So we're not quite there yet, probably assuming that's not going to play play out. But if we do drop a bit further, keep in mind we've got the few spikes at this level here, around the 6800, that, that could attract people. And we're just pushing in. This was the breakout area of the, of the, uh, the low. So right at the bottom of the demand area down here near the, the trend line could also spark some demand. And I think it would take probably quite a lot to push below there, given that we've made it above 7,000 now. It would be pretty, pretty sad if we dropped right down to 6,300 again. It might be a bit hard to recover from that. I think we have maybe entered a new era of above 7,000 to, to stay. But again, that's a, uh, largely based on sort of uh, the trend maintaining itself. Uh, UK data-wise, we've got uh, the GDP release tomorrow, um, that's probably going to have a bigger impact on the pound, I would say, if anything, rather than the, um, the UK 100. Um, it's the final revision for Q4, so not the most market moving. You know, obviously, the first revision typically is. Um, but uh, nonetheless, 
should that be a sort of surprising result, then that could determine whether we drop down to this um, this rising trend line or, or um, push up to the top one again. For you know, and if we do get up to the top one again before reaching the bottom one, typically means we're going to push through it. Now it's well final index final index. Um, so this has been a bit of a interesting one. I mean, you, you know, you can overcomplicate these things sometimes. Um, so over on the daily chart, pretty simple trade on the, with the benefit of hindsight. Here was the peak here, which I've had this line in. Check the chart forums. I've pretty much had it in since since this peak up here. Came down, found support of the line. And pushing back up, and it seems like now that we've broken this line, it seems like a good chance we'll get up to 12,200 again. So pretty simple stuff. If you know, with the benefit of hindsight, of course, um, if you're looking at the daily charts, but you can overcomplicate things if you drop down to the four-hour chart, as I like to do sometimes. Um, so here, this was the original pattern I had in this uh, the triangle-type pattern there. And we've got the gap below it, open below and, and drop down. So, you know, if you'd um, trade on the open of that four-hour candlestick, the gap below was a was a strong pattern. Um, but you know, you would have wanted to have uh, taken your profit before that major, de you know, uh, d possible demand area from the daily chart because we just that was as much as we got from it. So actually, I had a projection from the height of this candlestick. Which uh, projected us down closer to 11,400, which also corresponded with this 50% retracement. So that would have been a profit target area on this triangle break. So even though the break worked, to my mind, it's failed because I wouldn't really have. To me, it wasn't really worth the break if it was only going to go to there. It really needs to go to be there to be good. So. <clears throat> Even so, if you are depending on your sort of the rigidity of how you target your profits and losses on your trades, this could be a losing trade because you know you break going on the break, you're targeting down here, doesn't reach it, and now we're up through the um, <clears throat> the rising trend line. So you know even if you had just stopped right up here, you're bombed out. So that's unfortunate, but. You know, general philosophy that you've got to have towards trading is you never know the um, uh, direction the market will take on the next trade. It's really just over a, a prolonged spate of trades that you hope to get an edge over the market. And w one thing to con console yourself with a um, potentially f non reached objective from a pattern like this is that if the pattern does blatantly fail like this, it shows. Uh, to, to undo a bearish pattern, it shows a lot of strength in the market. So you've just got to quickly flip your mindset and say, okay, well, this has not worked out. <clears throat> but the market's showing a lot of strength. Let me look for um, bullish opportunities. And so if you've, actually, if you've drawn in your, um, you know, this line, which I, I admit to only having done after this rally, you can see actually rather than it being a triangle pattern, it was in fact more of a kind of flag pattern. And if it is a flag, Maybe you take the pole from down here, then you could you can project that whole pole up from the breakout area, and that pushes up quite a bit higher, probably up to around sort of twelve five hundred or something. So that that potentially could be what we're looking for. We we have to get through uh, this the you know the peak here. It's a bit of a random number, was it twelve two twenty first? But I think the nature of this pattern failure, the fact that it could be a, a, a bullish flag pattern. You know, um, do a little reading around the. Uh, um, if you look in our, um, for those who are not so familiar with various patterns, have a look through our uh, d d trading smart series. You know, to get a handle on kind of uh, pattern failures and pattern objectives and things and their implications. Um, but I think we, you know, we could be looking good at that. And fundamentally, we've still got the ECB's QE program. Now, I think we got a bit of a pullback in European markets because the, the euro got a bit of a rally. And uh, part of the benefit to the European economy, supposedly, is this um, drop in the euro. And um, it's the end of the quarter. 
So you get a lot of kind of fund repositioning towards the end of the quarter, and it has been it's pretty much the end of the first calendar month of ECB uh, QE. So people are sort of uh, starting to assess to how successful has it been to date. I don't think you can really probably judge it at this point. Not really been going for very long. Okay, so um, moving swiftly on, uh, did just well. Commodities have big been, been big movers recently. I mean, particularly oil. Um, we had that massive spike higher after the, uh, the Saudi-led Yemen strike. So let's have a look at Brent. <coughs> now, <coughs> this is a bit of a confusing looking chart, and again, it's one of those where. It's really just in quite a sort of choppy conditions on the daily chart. So either don't trade oil right now or trade it on a, on a shorter time frame to get more clarity from it, in my opinion. That would take us down to this four-hour chart. Now, obviously, always keep in mind the kind of significance of daily levels. So we had this, you know, we were coming down. This low didn't play out. Um, we blasted straight through that-ish. Got a kind of hammer off it. So let you know, at the time, I've got rid of it now, but um, just, you know, you have to get rid of lines once they show themselves to be important or not, get rid of them. But I had this in. Market came down there, pushed the hammer so that, you know, back towards that level, so it was showing some kind of importance. But really, this the, these ones prove the more important levels. Now, we're kind of based out a little bit there, got a strong push higher. So then, if you drop down to this four-hour chart, you can actually see that that <coughs> push higher took us in towards this, um, uh, what it became an effective downsloping trend line, which got another test, got a rough sort of rising trend line going on here, and eventually got that breakout, a nice little retracement to give you a low-risk entry for a push back off that, that declining trend line. And we pushed up, again, keeping in mind the, uh, the kind of top-down approach to looking at these markets. This is our weekly supply area um, from back here, where the market pushed down, found some support there. That level is still important, and we've got a spike into it. And uh, so this was the kind of Yemen bounce. And then, unsurprisingly, markets soon realized that uh, supplies weren't going to be disrupted. Uh, of oil out of the Middle East, and we've dropped right back down to this rising trend line, and in, as of the four-hour chart, broken it. Um, to some, that might be the trigger to, to go short the market. To me, probably not, because it's dropped, dropped down a lot, and there's a lot of space for it to bounce in that, in that area. You know, if you are trading breaking trend lines, I mean, just keep in mind what you're doing. It's a, it's a sort of momentum trade rather than a kind of swing, selling it from the um, from the value type trade. So there's more risk involved, um, but uh, theoretically you're catching momentum. It could just dive straight down, and you don't have to hang around. Um, but to me, probably this is quite a long-standing uh, trend line. I would prefer a daily close below there to, to symbolize a move back down to the bottom half of the range around 53. Um, one of the reasons that might do that is the, sh the tension sort of shifting a bit from um, from Yemen, which was pretty short-lived concern, to um, uh, as far as oil markets, of course, um, to to Iran, where they're they're having um, sort of peace-ish nuclear talks at the moment. Um, if there is some sort of deal struck with Iran and um, Western nations, that may lead to the lifting of sanctions that have been in place on, on Iran for a long time and allow them to sell oil to, uh, to a wider audience. And that would obviously increase global oil supplies. And Iran are quite a big producer, so that, that's actually pretty significant. And that, um, you know, should this nuclear deal be struck, I would not be surprised if that is the trigger for us actually making new lows in oil. I mean, given how much oil is oversupplied in the U.S. at the moment, we just need a little extra supply being produced um, from OPEC members, and that, that would just really um, take the, the oversupply story to the next level. That's all rather contingent on um, the strength or not of the U.S. dollar. Okay, let's just have a, a quick look at gold and silver looking pretty weak today. Gold back through 1,200. Um, pretty sharp 
reversal, actually. I would have expected, uh, you know, I sort of <clears throat> mentioned in a note to that um, 1200 might be a sort of magnet for prices leading into the non farm payrolls report this week. It still may do so, but I'm, I'm kind of surprised by the, the extent of the volatility. Um, and it is in part because the, um, the US dollar is finding a bit of a bid again. And we've seen, uh, we've seen iron ore prices, which um, are not very liquid markets. Um, so we as MC markets don't offer iron ore, but that's just hit six year lows. Um, so, you know, a sharp sell off from the, the 55 day moving average. Um, actually, it didn't really hit the 55, probably hit the 50. And uh, as you can see, I had this area circled. It didn't even take that long to get there. It shows how I misjudged the momentum, just fired straight up and reversed. And so then I think probably coming in, this was a bit of a breakout area. So look at this 170, could hold, um, should we get there before um, NFP. After post NFP, if it is like a big, uh, big bullish surprise, maybe plus 300, that would be pretty negative for gold. And I think we could be pushing down to the, the lows again. Help to look at the longer term picture. And you can see that, that declining trend line still holding, but we're just holding these lows at the moment. Um, so you can see the importance of this flat to slightly rising trend line going on here. If we get through that, you know that um, doesn't yeah you know, it doesn't necessarily spell the end because you can judge it from that too. But uh, still looking pretty weak in, in gold up to my mind. Um, I've been focusing a lot on copper, but I think the kind of opportunities in that well. We are bouncing off this previous peak. Um, so if you believe in, uh, let me see it a bit better from, you know, it's one of those occasions where, yeah, we're bouncing off the previous peak. Looking on the daily chart, you would say, oh, um, yeah, you know, I want to buy into the, the, the dip in a rising trend. Look at the weekly chart. I personally would not want to be um, going long against that. That's a big old reversal candlestick right there. And um, I'd be surprised if that doesn't eventually lead to lower prices. We could get a little bounce up towards the, um, you know, this, which I believe to be fairly significant uh, resistance. We pushed right through with massive strength up to this supply area. <coughs> but um, I think we're probably going to see lower prices. We're, we're kind of, I think we're moving into a trading range. So not quite an uptrend yet. Probably need more support to be found around here to, to actually push higher again. Um, maybe maybe China actually instituting some seriously um, easy monetary policy and um, some infrastructure projects. That could be the kind of thing to create the demand in, in copper. But I think they're get, they're, generally there's a pretty um, you near know, the housing market over there, which is a primary demand um, uh, for copper. Um, it's slowing. So I don't think that story is really going to change in a hurry. And eventually copper's got to roll over. Again, with all these commodities, pretty dollar to dependent. So running out of a time a little bit here, but um, quick, quick look at the FX. So um, this was the the peak um, from uh, post FOMC, just about about, about a sort of ten fifty, one ten fifty. We've basically not got there on three attempts, and now we're rolling over. We're holding the, uh, the moving average, but it's not looking too promising right now, especially given that bearish engulfing candlestick that we saw as of uh, well, Thursday last week. Not much of an immediate follow-through, but um, to me it looks like the bears are coming back in for the euro. Um, it depends how cautious you want to be about that. I mean, a close below there is almost certainly a difficult situation. We could still hold 105, but, you know, that's still a good potential move of, uh, what's that, three, 108 to 300 odd pips we could go from here. Um, and just if you're wondering what this little bit is, so here, this, this can sometimes be a, a low risk way to play. <coughs> bearish engulfing candlesticks, particularly on a, on a, on a daily chart. You see, 
say you want to trade the break, which would be happening, would have happened on Friday. Um, you have to ride out some kind of volatility, but you know it's the nature of um, prices break below the low of the bearish engulfing candlestick. You're short. Alternatively, when the candle's that big, there's often a bit of a pullback into the body of the candlestick, and it's often around 50%. So that's why this level looks a bit random in the in the in the four-hour chart, but actually, it's, that is the bearish engulfing candlestick as seen on the daily chart, and it. Uh, you know, I mean, to, to never put your order right on the 50% fib, because often this little annoying kind of thing will happen, where uh, the, what's the fib is no 955, and this is I think 45, 40, 48. So yeah, that would be very frustrating if you put it on the 50, and uh, you know that's that's plus the spread, uh, plus three pips away. You know, in these kinds of scenarios, when you're looking for a, what could be 100, 100 plus pips by now, don't worry about, in my opinion, don't worry about five or ten pips. Better to get in on the trade. Um, so there, so there it is. Um, that's 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 playing out quite well at the moment. A uh, similar picture on the pound. So the pound just uh, well, you know, in the euro. If you look, if you remember the chart we we're just looking at, it got up to here. This this is the post FOMC peak. The euro challenged that. The pound did not even push through. Basically, really the kind of body of the candle. But which you, I, I think this was probably the key determinant over here. On a weekly chart, it's a um, <coughs> you know it's a it's a down. There's the low, uh, lower low, high low, sorry, lower low. Um, Again, another lower high from here, break of the low, retest of the low. Got a lot of volatility post FMC, but <coughs> didn't manage to close above that low. Almost a false breakout, if you could say that much, and then rolling over. Not looking too good for the pound at all. And uh, the... the um, Carney was slightly more hawkish than what he said last time. Is that they're expecting a rate hike, but he's, he still said that it could be a, a you know they're still preparing for a possible rate cut, um, just as much as a rate hike. And that's what the chief economist Andy Haldane said last week. And that's still still showing its face there in the pound at the moment. Just a rate hike, really not looking like it's on the table anytime soon in the UK. Even though arguably the data is actually better than the US. But there you go. That uh, just shows it's important who's on the board in these central banks. Um, so yes, yeah, so there we go. So we we basically failed to get through to 150, and we're dropping off, and it's looking like possibly one for a break of the lows. Maybe get a bounce in this in this area again, but it's not looking promising. Um, Quick one at Euro Pound, just to show you again. <coughs> here's the uh, here's the, the supply area that's drawn on the chart. Check the chart forum. I've had this on for ages. Easy enough. Just that's where we got the bounce on the uh, the weekly chart. And as we come down to um, the daily chart, you can see again. This one's tricky. Um, a good chance of missing that. You don't want to put your put your entry too far away from the um, the area. In terms of the way of thinking about this is that, well, okay, if you missed it, again, there's a nice engulfing pattern, uh, bearish engulfing pattern. Look for the retracement and the drop again if you want to run into that trade. Still scope for us to go higher. It's back, he's kind of bouncing off this area here. So if you want to go with the short-term trend, we're kind of looking like maybe another retest, but just be aware of moving into that supply area with the euro and the pound. One last thing is we've got the ECB accounts released on Thursday. That could be a market mover. But given that it's going just into the holidays, I would imagine it's probably not. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, didn't see any questions coming in, so uh, I think we'll call it a day there. Thanks a lot, everyone. Jasper Lawler signing out.